Hi guys, welcome. Let's get to talk about Android Adaptive Designs. Specifically, we'll be talking about uh, the navigation drawer layout for all Android device screen sizes on phone, portrait and landscape, on tablets and tablets. We'll be having a consistent navigation drawer on different screen sizes. Let's head straight to Android Studio and let's dive deeper into code. Right there in the build gradle, we included the Android support designs 25.3.1. Likewise, the support percent 25.3.1. This particular library has been deprecated in Android 26, which is Marshmallow, uh, which is being replaced by the, uh, the constraint layout. So they actually work uh, hand in hand. We can still use it right there. We have the circle image view uh, from the uh, the uh, that's the German uh, library. Also, we have constraint layout as well. So we'll be actually using the two together. So let's get started. We'll be adding straight to the layout. Mostly when you're dealing with adaptive designs, uh, when you really want uh, your application to uh, display in screen sizes uh, in different uh, layouts. Uh, you work majorly in your layout files uh, where you get to create uh, the layout for the uh, landscape or the layout for the 600 dps or 820 dps uh, uh, screen sizes so you actually need to create different uh, layout for those uh, screen sizes so uh, on the on the fly android is going to pick the appropriate uh, screen size uh, once your application gets run on uh, probably tablet, tablet, phone, TV, and so on, even on the Android Wear. Uh, for better look of the uh, structure, uh, the Android hierarchy, I will be toggling to the project. Right in the project, we're going to see a, uh, a like the inner hierarchy of your project. So right there in app, we can see the, the source pointing at the main and now we'll look at the rest which is uh, where we have the drawable the layouts the values now when you get to look at the layout we have different drawable for different uh, uh, screen sizes as well HDPI MDPI X HDPI the XX and the XXX that's the extra large for TVs uh, bigger screen sizes now for layout now you get to look at uh, you have to create another directory uh, which is going to be a folder for the landscape as well you need to create another one for uh, 600 dp and above so uh, this is actually going to use uh, this layout right then the values we also create uh, the values directory for layout of 600 and 600 dp and above also for 820 dp that's specifically for uh different uh screen sizes and this is for the version 21 which is lollipop uh we need to integrate uh some functionality uh which are uh, started from lollipop and above so that's why we have that that's for specific uh android api so once you create those folder appropriately you can now replicate uh their xml's so I will be looking at the XMLs right inside the layout, which is uh, this is the first layout for uh, phone. Uh, that's for the normal screen we are used to, uh, the 320, the 480, and so on. Let's get to look at the activity mid. Now this is just uh, the normal draw layout we are all acclim uh, acclimatized with. Uh, well, but we have the layout with a night match parent and uh, the fits with system windows to be true and now we set a frame layout which uh, actually uh, encompasses the toolbar and at the same time uh, it has the main content area of your uh, of your screen so you actually need to inflate uh, this particular frame layout in the fragment so this is just the main content area of the screen if you notice it's highlighted so you have that set and we have the navigation view where we create an ID now view and uh, we actually wrap 
content and match parent to the width and height respectively and the gravity starts at uh, where you're going to add the header layout we're going to be talking about this layout uh, which are actually uh, designed uh, top-notch uh, for draw uh, view and you actually include the layout the draw header and also you included the menu you need the menu for the drawer and you need the header for the drawer so you have that included right there in the navigation view and let's forget you you have to include the toolbar as well so we'll get to look at those layouts uh, in a chiffy from here i'll be looking at the drawer header which is right there in the layout let me get to expand this so we could see uh, how this looks if you should notice we have a kind of uh, background a background image at the same time we have an uh, let's say a profile image we have uh, the name of the user and uh, the email so this these are just the major things uh, you should have right there in your drawer header uh, you should have uh, a, a background image which users could be could change uh, to fit uh, their their designs or to fit uh, their uh, their business uh, uh, structure or to fit uh, what they want that to depict and you should have a profile icon as well so we'll get to look at how we'll, we were able to lay that side by side we're using the percent uh, relative layout here where we have a frame layout which actually houses the uh the underlay picture you're seeing right there there's one you're seeing uh this the image view that housed that and we scale the type to center crop uh this is where we actually call that from the drawable uh the draw account background just a background so you can programmatically uh, make this changeable uh if you want users to pick an image from uh the gallery or take a snapshot and replace that so you can actually make that happen here so you just uh inflate that right here in the classes and uh, you make that changeable so you have that set up after that you have a linear layout uh, that uh, houses the the profile image using the circle image view at the same time the username or let's say the name of the user with uh the email address so you have that the padding bottom start and left and right all set to uh, 16 dps uh, we have that right there in the dimension and the gravity uh, to the bottom that's the linear layout that houses uh, the icon and uh, the text you're seeing uh, so you act actually have that sits right there at the bottom and the rotation is vertical so we have the circle image view uh, follows uh, with the layout with a height of 64 dp and uh we have a source so you can actually make this changeable as well since there's a source somewhere so you can make a user uh select the kind of image they can actually display there cool now we have the linear layout around uh the the text visually for the display name and also for the account information that's an email so if you see it is a linear layout that actually wrapped around that with an retention of vertical now the graffiti now is center vertical uh, which uh, is actually centerized and uh, you have the text view for the first one uh, which is the text I actually have coded that you can actually pick that from uh, probably a login screen uh, the username can actually populate that with that text view and also the email address of the user uh, after login so actually get that value and set it to this uh, text view using its ID so, use the id to set the text appropriately so you have that uh dynamic uh so it's actually going to be uh far better that way so you have that setup uh the lower studios and also the email address wrapped around the linear layout and also the outer linear layout followed by the percent relative layout let's get to look at the toolbar the toolbar will be so simple uh just the normal toolbar we used to have with the width of match parents the height is action bar size the background call it the color primary uh, from the color xml and we also have the theme we used uh, the dark action bar and the pop-up theme which is uh, actually the app compared light so these are just out of the box from android you can just uh, set up that this way let's look at the layout for the landscape 
for the activity main for the landscape if you should notice let me just make this quite visible so see better that's too big better if you should notice uh once you rotate uh the device you should have uh the dry stock no i should be opened and i uh, should create a master detail flow even right there on phone that's what uh, the essence of uh, the adaptive design we are trying to integrate here uh, once you you, know, you rotate the, the the phone you should have it uh, in a in a two-pane mode so we're going to actually that's why we created a layout for that for landscape and uh, even if you're using larger screens like uh, a tablet or tablet uh, you should also have it in a two-pane mode as well opened already don't have to, to uh, open uh, the drawer itself it should be like uh, a navigation uh, or let's say a menu view so with that's why we have it set up this way and uh, we we'll get to look at how we we'll get to create that uh, because we've actually created the landscape uh, directory for the uh, layout and now we have the navigation view just like what we had earlier we included the drawer header and also the menu drawer now we need a frame layout which will depict uh, the content area. Once, if, if, if I should click on this, you should notice it actually highlights the content area. So this is actually going to depict what you have. Any click here should work here, should show uh, immediately here. So you don't have to load the page again. So that's the essence of the 2 pin mode. Now we've been able to achieve that uh, with uh, the landscape uh, layout we actually opt for. So you have that uh, setup. We also included the toolbar right there in the landscape. Let's get to look at uh, the layout for the 600 dps. Uh, that's for larger screens. Uh, you get to look at them this way as well. And uh, we have that larger. Even we have the uh, the navigation drawer larger. Where we were able to achieve that uh, from the dimension. The dimension used. For the phone is quite different from uh, uh, the landscape and it's quite different from uh, larger screens uh, with 600 dps and above so if you should notice we have a larger uh, drawer because we have more space to work with that's the essence of the adaptive design we are trying to uh, work here and uh, the navigation view also is being displayed just like the way we had it right there in the phone and we have the frame layout for the content area so we have the content area worked right there in two pay mode so we have that setup uh we'll have to look at the values the values is very very important uh because that's where we were able to get uh different dimensions uh for different uh layouts if you should notice we have the values for the 600 dps and above and uh, we have for 9820 uh, which is an uh, extra large lab tablet and uh, we also have for the version 21 for lollipop so let's get to look at those values firstly we'll look at the the fourth values which is for the phone uh we'll get to look at the dimension majorly uh we have the horizontal margin at 16 dp and the vertical margin at 16 dp this is where we even set up the spacing uh, that's for the icons uh the spacing eight uh the vertical key line first and for the drop profile image size that that at 64 dp i think that's cool uh, it's it can flow along all dimensions so it's it's okay that way and even if you want it larger if you want this larger you can replace or make uh, it bigger for example if I want uh, the navigation drawer profile image size to be bigger right there in uh, as uh, 600 dps uh, screens I can paste that right there and increase this probably increase it with 12 so it, we can make it uh, 72 dp you have that setup so once it gets to uh, larger screens the uh, profile icon gets bigger so you can also style that uh, just like uh, the way I've done now so now we're looking at the 600 dp uh, screen size now we made it 24 if you should notice uh, the dimension for the phone is 16 now we've increased that to 24 and the uh, draw width now is 320 quite larger and the navigation drawer header too uh it's quite uh, bigger now with 180 dp so we have it bigger right there in screen size of 600 dps and uh, 
let's get to look at the screen size of uh, 820 dp uh, we have the horizontal margin at 64 dp so uh, the dimension uh, the side the dimension used now is quite larger than uh, the 600 dp which you have is at 24 dp so you can also increase different uh, testing once you're testing on these devices and this is just where you keep implementing uh, the dimensions to actually make it uh, look uh, more adaptive in different screen sizes so we've actually made uh, the uh, the building blocks which is creating the values uh, to actually point at specific uh, layouts so we have that for the 820 dp and uh, for 600 dp let's get a look at the values for the uh, 21 api uh, this is where we actually make the draw uh, transparent so you have the action bar most times once uh, you set up the, uh, the draw, the action bar is always overlay the draw. But now uh, we have these out of the box from uh, Android. The status bar color, uh, and uh, where you actually uh, need API 21 and uh, bow. So we actually make that transparent. So that's actually going to make uh, the draw uh, overlay the action bar. So that's uh, why we have it specified for the version 21. Uh, API version and above so you have that set up this way so you have a, a, a different theme detail for that so that's cool so we could have uh, we could achieve a lot of adaptive style of designs using different uh, flow the layouts the values and uh, different dimensions so we have that set up we can easily uh, toggle back to the Android uh, hierarchy from here, let's get to look at the menu because we mentioned the menu. Uh, we have the draw XML. This is very important. This is where you have the menu for your draw, uh, where you have different group type uh, right there wrapped around the menu tag. We have the group and with diff each menus or each items, they call them. Uh, we have for the home, the explore, following, and favorites. Uh, you, we actually use the, the drawable for specific uh, layout that's why if you should notice the drawable uh, we have for uh, HDPI, MDPI, XHDPI, XX for different screen sizes uh, that are very appropriate so for HDPI we have it as 48 uh, pixels for MDPI we have it as 32 for XH 64 uh, XX 96 while XXX 128 so for larger screens the menu should get bigger not uh, the same uh, size you're using that's actually not going to be adaptive uh, so once you get on tablet you should have uh, a bigger icon uh, once you come to phone it's actually going to pick the smaller one which fits the phone uh, screen size so that's uh, what uh, that's uh, actually depicting so let's straight back to the menu the drawer so we have that set up the and we could uh, actually make different groups i will employ you to actually read more when it comes to how to set up your menu uh layout so you can have different uh complex menu uh right there in your navigation drawer let's get to look at the menu main where we get to inflate uh this so you just have that so simple uh the menu xml and uh, you have the settings that's for the toolbar now so if you really want to add more overflow to the toolbar you want to add some menu at the top bar that's you can actually set that right here so you have that right there in the menu uh directory so that's cool with that you can see a lot of my work has been done right there in the rest folder so when you're talking about adaptive responsive designs uh using the material design in android you work deeper more on the, the rest uh folder let's head straight to the java class and let's uh, have it set up because we're actually going to handle screen orientation uh, because uh, we are also making a master detail flow right there in the portrait uh, in the landscape of the phone so that's uh, some programming as well it's not it's not going to happen out of the box we have to uh, make use of some uh, shared preference to maintain the state so so that at rotation We'll be able to uh, load on save instant state to uh, notify the uh, activity that we actually want uh, the draw opened and we want uh, the uh, detail also by the side 
so let's quickly brush through that and we have the toolbar setup we have the m2 pane that's for either two or us also an object of the navigation view and for the draw layout now we have a static two static anyway uh for the preference that's for the user land drawer and the state selected position which position uh is the particular drawer at point in time we also have the boolean for the uh land drawer and we have for the current selection position so let's get to look at how we were able to make that happen uh firstly you set the content view to the activity main right then the on create and you set up the toolbar this is a method we'll be talking about let's get to look at the m user land drawer uh which uh we actually got from the boolean now we're going to call the preference utilities we have that right there in the settings uh sub package called pref utils uh that's actually going to read the shared settings what is the present settings right there in the shared preference uh we have that set up and we're passing uh the constants we had and also it should be false at present so now it's test for the save instance state if it's not equal to not it creates uh uh if it's not equal to not it gets the state from the instance and uh which is an integer because we are talking of position here we see that is zero one and we're passing the state selected position as a parameter cool now let's get to uh display for phone and tablet for phone layout definitely the two pane will be false this is where you call the draw layout we initialize that and you set up the draw for two pane uh even if the sdk is greater than or equals to lollipop uh you're going to set the status bar color to what uh, you actually gave which is the color parameter dark, darker blue and uh, this is where you're actually going to set up uh the fragment you understand to actually display uh the the fragment for the two pane and uh, the activity for a single activity so for master detail it's going to be a fragment i think we we'll get that uh we're actually going to be working uh on that in subsequent videos now we have the draw the navigation view where we call it id and set navigation item selected listener where we need to override or override the navigation item selected passing the menu item as a parameter so once the menu item is set to checked which is true that's uh it's been toggled uh we have the switch to get the id this is for the each menu we have right there in the drawer for navigation item home for explore following and so on so this is where you're actually going to if you are probably using pure activity you point them down to the activity but if you're using a fragment this is where you actually play fragments and point them down to that we'll get to look to, to look at that uh later on when we are talking about uh, the details of a navigation view now we have this setup nav drawer somewhere called here we have it called right there in the phone layout so let's get to look at how we actually made that work if the toolbar is not equal to null you set the display home as up enabled that's like initializing the toolbar and uh, you set the navigation icon which is actually uh the burger uh icon that we used to have right there in the navigation and on navigation click listener that's on click of the navigation that's when you open the drawer so we have that gravity compact start and uh if not the user learn drawer uh you're going to uh open the drawer that's uh if, if it's not open you open it. and now you need to pass the state of the drawer to the shared preference uh this is where we actually save the shared setting onto the preference utils class we'll get to look at the utils class we have different methods that actually I saved settings. I also get the settings. Uh, passing in the preference user land drawer, uh, the state of the drawer is it opened or not? And this should be true because now it should be opened. That's why you have that as true. And uh, you also set up the toolbar normal where you set the support action bar so that uh, the toolbar could uh, be work right there in the layout. And now we have on save instance state. This is when you're trying to rotate. Once you're trying to rotate, the activity starts all over again. And you need to save the state of the activity right there to the save instance state. So that's why we call the super on save instance state, passing the out state as a parameter. You put the integer at the present position. Uh, 
called the state selected position and uh, also the that's the key rather and this is the value the current selected position you also put the boolean either two paid or not so we have that set up and when you're trying to restore the state uh on uh probably uh now it's uh it has it has rotated and the layout the activity is trying to start all over again it's going to check for the restore instant state uh since you are not passing that right then you're create to actually uh set the state save instant state now you are restoring the instant state uh you also have the two pane to get the boolean of the key what is it is it two pane or not and uh m current selected position now you get the integer of the key state selected position now you need to pass that right into the menu let's get to look at the menu you call the m navigation view and get the menu you get the item based on the correct position and sets checked to true so now it's actually going to open it that's it it's true i start graffiti true open so we have for the options menu for uh the toolbar uh because we only have one which is the action settings so you can decide to add our menus right there in the action bar We'll be looking at the preference with use that actually helps us to save shared settings and also read shared setting. And this takes CTX, that's the context, the setting name, and the settings value that our string uh, data type. And uh, you have the shared preference called and uh, uh, calling the context mode private. Should be uh, familiar with shared preference by now. Now we are saving uh, the int, uh, the values either one or zero. That's the position, and uh, we have the e the editor called here. Here we put the string for the setting name and the settings value. So we're actually going to read it one more time here, and uh, which is actually uh, get the string as well, the setting name and the default value. We actually, you set preferences to keep the states of the uh, uh, display screen rotation so this is just a simple approach uh, to adaptive design using the navigation drawer we'll get to have a consistent flow of these uh, layouts uh, right there in different screen sizes I'm actually going to be testing on phone uh, portrait and landscape and I'll be going further to to uh, test on a, uh, a larger screen emulator I pray that works and uh, for us to actually see how it flows to as well how it's been displayed how the screen how the icons get bigger and how uh you've been able to use up the space you have instead of making uh, uh excess white space available uh that's the essence of adaptive design so it's uh, a very major aspect for developers to take uh into consideration when you are creating an android application for different screen sizes uh, make sure you create adaptive designs uh integrated or if you want to use a responsive but the better approach is to use to be adaptive and work with different screen sizes. Thank you guys. We'll be coming up with different series of adaptive designs in subsequent videos. And please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I'll be showing you uh, the screencast. All right, right there on in the Android emulator, Nexus 5X, just for API 21, Lollipop. We have the phone are actually displaying uh, the navigation drawer now let's get to look at how it's going to be displayed on click of this uh, we have the gravity start we have the swivel cool can you see that we could have uh, the profile icon uh, the display name as well as the email address with the menu cool so these are very very uh, appropriate and uh, we actually expect something of this nature now let me uh, try to get the uh, landscape uh, mode can you see that we have it in the master detail flow so we actually don't need to swivel or to uh, make bring out a drawer or something it's actually going to be static just like uh, a menu flow so you can actually uh, scroll through and uh, have other aspects of the uh, menu list so this is just what I'm trying to 
check about and now we have that achieved uh, right there on landscape and portraits so let's get to look at the portrait uh, that's for the portrait we have it disappeared so we need to uh, toggle uh, the uh, draw for us to have that uh, displayed so this is the two different uh, approach that we've actually integrated uh, in the code using shared preference and i also try to uh, load up uh, a larger emulator if that could actually uh, display what we also wanted.